Hi friends, welcome back to All in Law. This is a quick pediatrics and today we're going to talk about hydrocephalus. Okay? So please do subscribe and share our videos. So to understand what is hydrocephalus is, we need to understand the most important basic thing that is a CSF flow. Okay? Remember the CSF is made up by the choroid plexus choroid plexus they are present in the walls of thir lateral third and fourth auricle no it's a ventricle not the brain uh, not the what you call heart it's about the ventricle of the brain okay so CSF is made up by the what you call choroid plexus that present the walls of the lateral third and the fourth ventricle let's talk about the flow the csf flow in the direction from the lateral ventricle okay it goes to foramen of monroe okay then third ventricle okay third ventricle then cerebral aqueduct okay ca then fourth ventricle okay then we have foramen of magnum foramen of sorry foramen of magendi and lushka and lushka okay let me let l ml foramen of magendi and lushka and then we have subarachnoid space okay then we have arachnoid villi got it First from a lateral, uh, lateral ventricle, then foramen of Monroe, then the third ventricle, then we have cerebral aqueduct, then fourth ventricle, then foramen of Magendi and Lushka, then subarachnoid space of the spinal cord in the brain, then it moves to the last space that is known as arachnoid villi. Got it? Now the hydrocephalus is the enlargement of the skull, right? So now, if there's any blockage to the flow of CSF, it causes hydrocephalus. That's it. You're done. So let's talk about the, there are two types of hydrocephalus. Okay, one we have obstructive, second we have non-obstructive. Obstructive is also known as non-communicating because there is an obstruction, that's why they are not communicating hydrocephalus. And a non-obstructive is also called as communicating hydrocephalus because there is a communication. Even though there is a communication, but there is a hydrocephalus. That's really very interesting, right? Yeah. The obstructive, that is a um, non-communicating hydrocephalus, the most commonly due to stenosis or narrowing of aqueduct of sylvus. Remember. Okay. Aqueduct of sylvus. An obstruction in the fourth ventricle, as we discussed before, is the most common cause in children. Okay, fourth ventricle, remember, including what you call posterior fossa brain tumor, posterior fossa brain tumor, then we have type 2, Arnold Carey, malformation, type 2, remember, and we have Dandy Walker. Dandy Walker syndrome. Okay, in a non-obstructive, that is a communicating, the most commonly follows what you call subarachnoid hemorrhage. Subarachnoid hemorrhage. Okay, S A H. Blood in the subarachnoid space. This blood accumulated in the subarachnoid space causes what you call obstruction to the flow of absorption of CSF and lead to obstruction of a CSF right so raise the CSF will be raised right so that's it so who will obstruct this causes can be meningitis remember infection meningitis okay or any intrauterine infection if in, in neonate intrauterine infection remember okay there's another type that is known as X vaco hydrocephalus resulting from decreased brain parenchyma Brain decreased brain parenchyma. 
okay right so what are the clinical features clinical features tell me let's talk about the infants what are the clinical features in infants how do they present accelerated rate of enlargement of the head is a prominent sign okay more than 95 percentile usually 95 percentile then we have bulging anterior frontal line okay then there can be what you call increased intracranial pressure signs like lethargy patient can be infant can be lethargic vomiting repeatedly vomiting projectile vomiting headache excessive cry okay then there can be ocular bobbing ocular bobbing okay then there can be what you call upper motor upper motor neuron lesion clinical signs like positive babinski sign brisk reflexes okay because why because of the stretching of a descending cortical spinal tract stretching of descending cortical spinal tract okay right in a children what do you see children and adolescent if there is hydrocephalus signs are more subtle because the cranial sutures are partially closed okay increase icp can be there increase intracranial pressure okay and remember the most important for usmle or mrcpch examination they give the classic history of uh, decreased school performance decreased school performance okay okay remember right so how do you diagnose that one is a history clinical history very important clinical history physical examination very important then cat scan of the head mri to locate the lesion okay and remember the some cases of the family case of acute adult stenosis have been reported as a familial that is x linked pattern okay which acute adult stenosis Okay guys, so thank you so much for watching this video. This was a brief video, brief discussion about the hydrocephalus, types of hydrocephalus and uh, what you call uh, flow of CSF. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.